Hi, this is JP Morgan, and today's Slanted Lens lesson is a look at lens focal lengths. What do different focal lengths do to the human face? We've got our beautiful Rebecca Grant here with us today. We're going to take and shoot her first with a very long lens, then as we shorten that focal length, we're going to see what it does to her features and how it changes the look at the face. So let's get started. Focal length of the lens determines its angle of view and also how much the subject will be magnified. As we move closer to the subject and change the focal length of the lens, it now changes the perspective. Wide angle focal lengths distort the face and create a humorous perspective, while longer focal lengths flatter the face and cause the features to look a little more soft and less pronounced. We have a very simple one light fashion lighting setup here to take photos of Rebecca. We gave her a bit of a rock and roll look with the Ozzy Osbourne hair and the ripped jeans to start with, but she's a great sport. Let's look at how we set up this two light setup before looking at the comparison images of different focal lengths and see what they do to the face. I used a silver lined extra small Photoflex Octodome as my key light. She is close enough to the background that this light lights her and the background. I wanted to keep this lighting very simple so it can just demonstrate what the lenses do to the face. Let's start with a 200 millimeter lens on our talent's face and just see what that does. A 200 millimeter lens is considered a telephoto and flattens out the features just slightly. Now let's look at a 135 millimeter lens. This is still considered a telephoto lens but feels a little better than the 200 millimeters on her face. It's compressed slightly but is very flattering. Now let's see what a 100 millimeter lens does. Not quite as flattering as the 135 millimeter lens but still not bad, very usable. Now we have our 70 millimeter lens. Things are starting to stretch and lengthen. The jaw seems a little longer and the hair will start to poof up on the top and look a little bit larger. Now let's look at a 50 millimeter lens. Even though this is considered a normal lens, it's starting to distort just slightly. I could move away from her just a little bit and reduce the effects of the distortion and it would be very workable. But when I keep her head the same size in the frame, her face is going to start to distort. Now we're moving into wide angle lenses, the 35 millimeter lens. We expect the face to start to distort. We're using a 35 millimeter lens. This is a little more comical. Her features are becoming a little more elongated. It's just a comical looking lens. Now let's go to the 24 millimeter lens and push it just a little bit. The 24 millimeter lens is very distorted. We're even starting to see off from the seamless paper in the background. Very comical, not extremely flattering. Let's take a look at our 20 millimeter lens. With the 20 millimeter lens, it almost becomes alien time. It's very distorted and she looks a little bit like an acquirer shot for the Roswell alien landing. This can be very funny if used in the right circumstances. We have seen that different focal lengths can change the look of the face. For a headshot, I like to be around 135 millimeters if I have the room to get back far enough from the individual. I will use a 100 or a 135 millimeter lens as my choice for headshots most of the time. We're going to push our lighting setup just a little bit. We're going to make Rebecca look a lot more sophisticated. Our first light in this fashion two light and reflector setup will be a strip box of rim. Here's our first light on her face. It's a rim light from the small strip box on camera left. We'll now add that silver lined octodome with a dynolite head. And lastly, the gold side of a small light panel reflector. We're going to kind of move that in until we open up the shadows under her chin. Here's some of the images before we do our post-processing work with them. We're now going to move on to a lens perspective comparison using the set from an upcoming lesson on combining tungsten and strobes. The camera will move in and the subject size will not change, but the perspective in the background will. Let's look at a 200 millimeter lens on our talent with the background. We don't see very much of the background in this image. It's very distant, the lights are blurring. It just gives us a nice combination of her with a little touch of background. Let's go to the 135 millimeter lens. We see more of the background elements now as the lens opens up and becomes more wide. Her face looks good and she looks very thin. This is a great look. Now to 100 millimeters. At 100 millimeters, she still looks good and we see more of the background elements. Now to 70 millimeters. Even at 70 millimeters, she looks good, but we see more of the background. We're starting to see our tungsten key light creeping in for the camera left side. Even still at this distance, it's holding up and looking very good. Now to 50 millimeters. We're far enough away from her that her head is only distorting just slightly, but we're seeing a lot more of the background. Now to 35 millimeters. Now the face is looking very distorted and we're seeing off the set in the background. Let's look at 24 millimeters. Now the face is looking very distorted and we're seeing off the set in the background. The lens choice changes not only her face, but the background as well. 
I try to keep mine in the 70 to 200 millimeter range on sets. It just requires too much set to accommodate a wide angle lens. You've got to build a huge set back there to keep it in the view of the lens. The lens not only controls the look of the face, but it controls the background as well. So you have to choose a lens that communicates your thought, your feeling, taking all those things into consideration. In the post process, I took the image into Nick's software ProFX4 and made some changes. This is my starting image. First I did a bleach bypass filter and turned the opacity down on the layer about 55%. I then used the film vintage filter and dialed this layer down about 40%. You know I love the look at this point but the light vignette around the sides is a little too harsh. I'm going to use a vignette, a dark vignette layer to knock that down just a little bit. This will become my final image. I'm going to repeat this same process with my next image. Here's my beginning image and here's my final. I had a great shoot. I really enjoyed the things that we shot today. I enjoyed working with Rebecca. She was extremely good. I really enjoyed the information that I learned most of all. Great information about background and perspective. I'm going to use it to apply it to my next shoot. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Only on this DVD are we going to show you how your printer will fire your strobes. Your printer can't fire your strobes, but it was really nice to try. I think we'll try an iPad next. To get JP's DVD, go to theslantedlens.com. Pirates are included. Who puts pirates in a DVD?